Let's firstly look at what happens when people go too far to the left. So when liberals go too far to the left, they start to hate all of those opposing hard conservative virtues over there. Those virtues seem to conflict with what they believe in. They don't like those words, they like these words. So what happens when you start discarding those virtues? Well, we're going to focus on just two of them, truth and righteousness. When you discard truth, you get lies, and when you discard righteousness, you get immorality. And that's where the liberal ends up when they come over too far to this side. So when the gay marriage debate happened, liberals supported it because to them love is love and love is all that matters. And whether it's man for man, woman for woman, doesn't matter to them, it's just all love. Um, so when it did become legal, they joyously flooded Twitter with the hashtag love wins. And liberals couldn't understand why Christians weren't supporting it too. I mean, after all, wasn't Jesus himself all about love? If Jesus Christ was alive today, I cannot see him as the Christian person that he was and the great person that he was saying this could not happen. Um, he was all about love and compassion and forgiveness and trying to bring people together. And that is what the church should be about. Don't you see everyone? Jesus was just all about love and compassion and forgiveness. No, that's not true. I mean, he was partly about these virtues, but that's only half the story because he was also about truth and righteousness. And when gay marriage was legalized, the hashtag could easily have been righteousness loses or morality loses. And when morality loses, there's always a price to pay. Gay married people are 270% more likely to commit suicide. On average, their lifespans will be 20 years shorter than straight people. They will experience way more disease. Lesbians are 91% more likely to report inferior health outcomes. 65% of HIV AIDS transmissions occur through homosexuality, despite the fact that they're only about 1-3% to of the population. Within the first year of gay marriage, 66% are unfaithful. And if they reach five years together, which is unlikely, that figure rises to 98%. Every statistic tells us that homosexuality is unstable and damaging to those involved and to society as a whole. And by ignoring righteousness in this issue and by legalizing gay marriage, we are effectively collaborating with that damage. And it's not just homosexuality, of course, because if love is love and love is all that matters, then that means that sex outside of marriage is okay for straight people too. So if two people feel like they're in love, then it doesn't matter if they're married. Righteousness goes out the window. And so there's a certain in STIs, there is a burden on the healthcare system, there is heartache, rejection, low self-esteem, depression, abortions and fatherless homes, and a whole bunch of extra problems. In fact, even adultery can be justified by the love is all you need mindset. Aren't you going to answer her? That's like the 10th bing bong message she sent. She wants to know what's wrong. What's wrong? What's wrong? You're married. That's what's wrong. Oh my. What? She wants to meet you in person. Hey, look, Phoebe, I wanted to meet her in person too, okay? But she's married. She has a husband. What if the husband person is the wrong guy and you are the right guy? I mean, you don't get chances like this all the time. If you don't meet her now, you're going to be kicking yourself when you're 80, which is hard to do, and that's how you break a hip. <laughs> okay. I'll do it. Oh, yay! Okay, great. Go, ma'am, go put on your shoes and then march out there and meet her. See Chandler's face here? Wow, you're right, Phoebe, this is great advice. Love is love, after all. Nothing can oppose love. And the audience, of course, is cheering and laughing as Chandler goes off to commit adultery and destroy a marriage. Because he's following his heart, don't you see? It's so romantic, he's following his heart. The liberal is essentially becoming hedonistic. Hedonism is defined as the belief that pleasure is the highest good. And since the liberal's emphasis is always on feelings, then hedonism is the natural end. Whatever feels good, is good. If it feels right in your heart, it can't be wrong. They'll say things like, follow your heart. Your heart knows the way. The heart never lies. This is liberal wisdom. But of course, it isn't really wisdom. It is ruinous nonsense. Our hearts often want immoral things. Our hearts often want to fornicate and commit adultery. We often want to lie and to steal. The Bible says that the heart is deceitful above all things, but we have to restrain it. We have to keep a check on these impulses. And how do we restrain it? by keeping a hold of righteousness. We need a firm moral code to keep our hearts in check. C.S. Lewis wrote, For any happiness, even in this world, quite a lot of restraint is going to be necessary. Every sane and civilized man must have some sort of principles by which he chooses to reject some of his desires and to permit others. One man does this on Christian principles, another on hygienic principles, another on sociological principles. But nature, in the sense of natural desire, will have to be controlled unless you're going to ruin your whole life. 
Liberals also discard the hard truth, and we see that in the transgender issue. Dr Paul McHugh, the Harvard-educated former chief psychiatrist at Johns Hopkins Hospital says, sex change is biologically impossible. People who undergo sex reassignment surgery do not change from men to women or vice versa. Rather, they become feminized men or masculinized women. Claiming this is a civil rights matter or encouraging surgical intervention is in reality to collaborate with and promote a mental disorder. This is the truth of the issue. It is a mental disorder. These people are ill. It is biologically impossible to turn from one sex into another. But of course, the liberal mindset is to say, well, that doesn't matter. Truth doesn't matter. Let's just love. And so they look at a mutilated man in a dress and a wig with sympathy. And despite all the scientific facts, they insist on pandering to these self delusions, to this mental illness. And they treat that person as though he really were a woman. Caitlyn Jenner kissing her mother and then walking to the stage at the ESPYs right here on ABC to accept the Arthur Ashe Courage Award. And here's the thing, if a liberal is willing to deny one of the most easily verifiable truths of life, that human beings are immutably male or female on the basis that it might hurt someone's feelings to say so, then there is literally no fact, no truth that they would not be willing to deny on the same basis. And so life quickly gets absurd. This is a 52-year-old Canadian guy who now identifies as a six-year-old girl. And here's a man claiming that he's trans species, a dog called Spot. And here's a 21-year-old woman identifying as a baby. And here's a Norwegian identifying as a cat. Now, whereas a conservative appeals to the truth and says, hang on a second, this is absurd. You're being ridiculous. This is not a six-year-old girl. This isn't a dog. This isn't a baby. This isn't a cat. Let's stay in reality here. The liberal is just so keen to just love that truth still goes out the window. The liberal affirms all of these people in their ridiculous subjective fantasies and so literally anything goes, anything. This is a guy being allowed to become a cover girl as though he really were one. Guys, my name is James Charles and I'm a 17 year old makeup artist. Today I'm living out one of my biggest dreams and I'm currently on set of my first ever TV commercial with cover girl. That's right. I am a new cover girl. So you see, when liberals place all of the emphasis on the heart and on feelings, they're willing to shut down their brains entirely. There is no absurdity that they won't go along with in the name of inclusion. Now, if a conservative comes along and asserts the truth, then no matter how scientific or how factual, the liberal will turn on that person for hurting feelings. They will get decried as intolerant, a bigot, a hater, a homophobe, a transphobe, whatever. They have all of these buzzwords. You see, through their lens, the truth only sounds like hate speech. The liberal is only capable of interpreting the world through this lens. So if it isn't love, then to them it must be hate. The truth always just sounds like hate speech to those who have come to hate the truth. And remember, the liberal also likes collectivism. It's all about the herd to them. It's all about big government keeping everyone in check for the common good. And so the liberal promotes political correctness too. And this is basically trying to put a zip on individual thought and individual freedom of speech so that nothing is said that may hurt the feelings of the wider group. So at the Olympics in 2016, this happened. I wonder if they're gonna have a kiss. Go on, let's have a look. No, too wired into their mobile devices. <laughs> oh, we're on. Come on, let's have a kiss. Let's hope they don't go on to two blokes that, uh, next to each other. Now, of course, liberals went into meltdown over this comment and demanded a groveling apology from the commentator. Even though he personally didn't want to see homosexuality on screen, liberals believe that individual freedom of thought and speech has to be shut down to preserve the feelings of minorities. And this collective herd mentality is how liberals generally try to police their environment and keep everyone in check. It's called virtue signaling. So whenever a liberal spots someone expressing individual thought which is out of line with the collective, they virtue signal to the herd and try to create a bullying crowd situation to bring that person back into line. They shout bigot, homophobe, hater, transphobe, all of the names and their expectation is that the herd will then come in behind them and join in with the outrage and with enough group bullying the free thinker will then retract his thought and shrivel up and dutifully conform. So here's an example of someone trying it in real life but it doesn't quite work out for him. I'd be a lot freer if people like you were put in prison as retaliation for the collective crime of racism, anti-Semitism, misogyny, and homophobia. All you f***ing God botherers are war criminals and liars and charlatans. Atheism forever! 
No, this is real. I'm throwing back everything you dirty goat and throwing back at us. Hitler was a Christian. He killed Jews because his because his non-existent God told him to. Hitler was a practicing Catholic. How I even found on the internet a picture of a Nazi swastika. It was made by the Nazis and it had a cross on it. It said, God is with us in German. Yeah, so don't give me that whole crap about Nazi. That goes on for a while, but you can see how he started shouting really loudly and looking around in the hope that others would then come in behind him and back him up and create a bullying herd situation. It didn't work that time, but it does often, especially online where people feel braver. And people often back down under this pressure too, because A, no one likes to be the social outcast, it feels good to be a part of the crowd, and B, whoever raises the red flag, whoever does the virtue signaling and calls attention to the situation, gains respect from their peers for demonstrating in their eyes at least, the right opinion. The feel-good chemical dopamine literally floods the reward centre of their brain as they receive social media prestige for leading the charge. And so strong is this chemical feeling of reward that it lends itself towards a culture of outrage. Liberals begin actively looking for someone new to expose, someone else to demonise, just so they can get this dopamine hit and their narcissistic moment in the limelight. In other words, virtue signalling soon becomes about personal pride rather than genuine concern for marginalised minorities. And that becomes oppressive. Because when you can't express a free opinion without being attacked by a herd, it becomes a type of fascism. Fascism is just where no contrary opinions are allowed. And that's where the far left ideology eventually gets us. So that's why in communist nations, for example, no dissenting opinion is ever allowed. No freedom of thought or speech. Everyone has to conform to the collective, to the groupthink, to the pre-approved ideology. And so everyone becomes a dehumanised cog in a giant political machine. So here's a summary of some of the problems of life in the left pit. It's increasingly immoral, it's disease prone, it burdens healthcare systems, it collaborates in mental disorder, engenders confusion, promotes absurdity, criminalizes truth, is destructive, repressive, it is bullying, and left unchecked it will lead to self-destruction. Because here's the thing, you can't build someone else's house by tearing your own one down. And when liberals always look to support minorities, they tend to do it by attacking the majorities. So in the West that means that they tear down Christian, heterosexual, middle class, traditional family units led by males. In their mind, these are the enemies of equality and tearing them down is justified. So they'll attack men and Christianity. But in attacking these groups, they're actually attacking some of the foundations of Western society, the traditional family unit, Christianity, male leadership, these are some of the things that made the West the safest, the healthiest and most prosperous place in the world to live. And by attacking these foundations, they're actually sawing off the branch on which they're sitting. It's a kind of self-immolation based on guilt really for having been so successful. And if left unchecked, that will lead to cultural suicide.